We're going to play a little game that's called uh, What's Happening in the Incubator. Love it. Uh, so we're going to be messing around in the incubator and I'm going to answer a question from one of you guys. Now what do we got here? Check it out, people. Oh, yes, another cherry head. Look at the size of that beautiful yoke. How awesome is this little tortoise? Uh, this is why I love doing these videos. I knew I had something going on in the incubator. Sometimes their yokes are a little, a little bit goofy looking. Okay, and I'll show you what we do next. You may have noticed my black head python is in the tub filled with water. But let's get to work and see what's going on. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week's special shout out goes to Joey Lilly. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. And I will show you what's happening in the incubator. All right, so as you guys know, I like to check on the incubator. You should do that every couple of days or every day if you can. Uh, right here we have some uh, radiated tortoise eggs right there. I'm just gonna place them right up on this little skinny shelf right there. And uh, we've also got, look, look at that, radiated tortoises there. And uh, what I'm looking for when I come in the incubator is I'm looking for any rotten eggs. And this, ooh, this smells rotten a little bit. So sadly, this guy's gonna get placed up here and I'm gonna throw that egg out because you don't want any other rotten eggs to kind of mess with, oh, look at this. You don't want them to kind of infect or cause other eggs to get a fly strike or any kind of maggots to develop and things like that. So you want to pull that out. Also check this out. There looks to be a little fungus on top. So what I'm going to do is quickly, and by the way, I can leave that open for a little bit because what happens is you exchange air uh, and that's good, which is fine as long as you don't leave it open too much. So I'm just going to kind of rinse this off and make sure we get off all that fungus that might have grown there. Don't tell Kate that I'm in the uh, sink over here. Thank you very much. Appreciate your guys' uh, cooperation with that. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back on. All right, let's see what else we got here. That looks fine, those guys look fine. I, th I think I saw a fly though. And every once in a while, it's, it's one of these things with the incubator, this is a little Greek tortoise egg. It's one of these things that incubators, I'm just, nope, smells good. You give it a old smell test. You notice I'm not rotating the eggs, okay? Because we don't want to rotate them. As we know, reptile eggs, the yolk goes to the bottom and the embryo attaches to the top. It's kind of chilling in the incubator right now. What do we got here? Check it out, people. Oh, yes. Another cherry head. A cherry head is hatching. Look at the size of that beautiful yolk. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at this little guy. Oh my gosh. How awesome is this little tortoise? Little cherry head tortoise just hatched out. Let's kind of get him rinsed off a little bit. I like to do this. Oh yeah, sometimes their yolks are a little, a little bit goofy looking. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep him clean. I'm gonna, gonna set him up actually in a different little enclosure in a little bit of a nursery we're going to keep this clean so now what i've got to do is i have to find a little place for this guy to hang out let's shut the incubator this is so fun man this is uh this is why i love doing these videos i knew i had something going on in the incubator if i'm telling the truth but i didn't know i had a cherry head so that's really cool um let's go out over here and we're kind of walking around. This is what I would have to do anyway, people. I gotta find something that we can kind of set up this little guy in. I've got quite a mess, as you can see. I got all kinds of things going on. I'll put you guys right there. Ah, perfect. Very, very simple. Little cup, right? So what I'm gonna do is rinse it out in this sink so I don't get in trouble with the messes. And uh, just rinse this out. This is kind of what I do when I have little babies and you can see this yolk sac looks a little bit, eh, not as healthy as I want it to look or as I'd hoped for it to look, but that's no big deal. And what I'm also going to do, guys, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to gently dribble some lukewarm water on the yolk, okay, just like this. We're going to rinse off any kind of necrotic tissue or any of the uh, substrate from the incubator, gently, just gently do this, okay? And this is a utility sink, people, so it's not, doesn't have to be the cleanest sink in the world. Don't judge me. 
We're going to rinse this little guy off. I love it. All right, very good. I feel good about that. This guy's nice and rinsed off, huh? Okay. Now we're going to shut off the water. And I'll show you what we do next. We'll put him in here for a moment. Now let me show you what we have to do. We have to go get a little paper towel. And we are going to moisten that paper towel. And hey, I'm getting a text message. How exciting. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and moisten this paper towel. Then I'm going to put a little triple antibiotic on that yolk sac just to make sure that nothing gets this little guy. So check it. Just take a little square and you fold it in half and then in quarters, right? Now we're going to put that in there like so. I'm going to take my little spray bottle. I'm going to pump it first. Yeah, there you go. And uh, just give it a little moisture so that nothing sticks to the yolk. All right. Then later on, I'm just going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to put a little triple antibiotic on this little guy. And uh, he should be 100% fantastic. So we've accomplished that. Uh, what I do want to do, all right, people, leave me alone. Just stop bothering me. One of my least favorite things is um, text messages. Really, I don't like them at all. So you know what I'm going to do? We're going to silence this phone because we're making a video, people. All right. I hate texts. Okay. We're going to put this guy down here because if he does climb out, I don't want him to fall. So he shouldn't be too active to uh, fall out. And to be perfectly honest, after this video, I'm going to go ahead and fix them all up. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Something's going on in here, people. Hey, check it out. All right. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh, I love it. You know what those are? These are red foot tortoises. Awesome. Look at this. Oh, perfect. And they're ready to go. We got to be careful. As It's funny. As baby tortoises hatch, their movement will wake up other tortoises in the egg. Now, this guy's a late bloomer where he hatched out later. And there's these guys. Awesome. Let's put them right into here. We'll give them a little drink. And we're going to rinse them off. They'll stick their little heads up. Their yolks aren't um, so large that these guys are, oh look, it's immediately drinking. Immediately, knowing that they need this life-giving water. So we're gonna let them soak. How awesome, beautiful baby red foots. Fresh out of the egg, let's go back to this. This one's moving about. I'm gonna leave him in here for a bit longer, obviously, because look at the size of that yolk. So what'll happen is in a few days, this yolk is gonna get absorbed and this little guy is gonna unfold even more. And when he does that, I'll be here to kind of pull him out. Let's get rid of these eggshells. All these eggs, how exciting. I love this stuff. Uh, I hope you guys do as well. So what we're doing is just taking care of all these little guys. My goodness, awesome stuff, man. All right, so we're gonna leave this little guy, say goodbye to him. We'll see him in a couple of days when I pull him on out. Put this back up in the incubator. All right, I don't see anything in there. That's an old shell, a couple old shells from an old hatch that I didn't remove. All right, well, that's good. So this little dude, you just kind of hang tight, little buddy. I'll be back to you in 15 minutes or so, and we'll get this video rolling. Now, as I mentioned, this is an Ask Camp Cannon video. Uh, thanks for waiting, and today's question comes from one of our Patreon supporters. You may have noticed a serpent. My blackhead python is in the tub filled with water. Now, uh, that has something to do with today's question. So, here it is, and the question is from Mary Lynn Brown. Hi Mary Lynn, how you doing? Her corn snake has a very small patch of stuck shed on his head in front of his eyes. How can I best remove it? Also, when do male turtles lose the urge to breed? I think he's a red ear. That's what she's asking. Okay, well, good questions, good questions. You snuck two in there, but I don't mind. Well, let's go with the turtle first. So, uh, it, to my knowledge, turtles and tortoises do not senesce, which means age, like other animals, like mammalian animals. Uh, these animals continue to be reproductively viable for many, 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 many years. And it doesn't slow down with age. So I don't know why yours may not be breeding or may not be trying to uh, 
uh, reproduce, but sometimes it has to do with the fact that there's only one male and one female. Uh, sometimes they need another male or another female to kind of stimulate the urge. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that tortoises will continue to be reproductive throughout their entire lives, which is an incredible thing. Uh, now, the first part of your question you were asking, and I'm gonna put you guys back over here. All right, so the second part of your question was about, or well, the first part was actually about your corn snake. Now, Snake Discovery, Emily over at Snake Discovery did a really good video about that, so I would implore you guys to go check out that video on her channel. But for crib sheet, here's what we got. Uh, if you've got an animal with a stuck shed, you can go ahead and soak them very simply. Uh, this is my blackhead python. He's not got a stuck shed, but he is shedding. Now, what you need to know about snakes and shedding is the fact that snakes, just like turtles and tortoises, or rather tortoises, how I always talk about high boxes and heated shelters and human hides, they need a hide that also has the proper humidity as well, as does their entire enclosure. Now, even a snake like this, blackhead python, which is usually found in more arid uh, environments, will be a burrowing animal. This animal loves to go underground. It'll go into rodent burrows, it'll go into reptile burrows. Uh, it eats other reptiles, other snakes, uh, small mammals. But basically, guys, they'll go and have this kind of almost a subterranean life. They'll spend a lot of their time underground. And when they do that, there's humidity under there. It's a microclimate. And that enables them to have proper shed. So if your snake is not getting the proper shed or getting, uh, is getting stuck sheds or uh, retained eye caps and things like that, it's because the humidity in the environment or habitat is not adequate for the animal to properly function or to properly shed its skin. Are you gonna come on my face? Now this guy's quite temperamental. I could always get a bite, you never know. Uh, this guy is kind of, um, uh, kind of, what's the word I wanna use? Uh, schizophrenic, yeah, there you go. But anyway, uh, this snake is beautiful. I love blackheads. And so what you'd wanna do uh, is you can get a little tub, make sure it covers the body, make sure the water is lukewarm. You don't want anything too hot or too cold. You wanna make sure it's similar to the temperature that the snake is at. So mid 80s is usually a good rule of thumb. Uh, also, uh, you wanna fill it up high enough that the animal's body can be completely submerged. <clears throat> and as the animal moves around, uh, it's gonna loosen that skin up. It's gonna dunk its head under. You're gonna leave it in there for 20 to 30 minutes. And that's basically going to be, uh, for most cases, enough to help dislodge or loosen any of the retaining shed. Now, uh, to pull it off the head, you can just simply use your fingers, you can use a washcloth, but honestly, uh, it's really something that's necessary. And that's why I'm always talking about uh, husbandry, because husbandry is going to be a preventative measure, so you don't have to deal with too much of these problems, but they happen from time to time. So when they do happen, go ahead, get yourself a little tub like that with a secure lid, make sure the water is warm, it covers the body, and for most cases, that's gonna get the snake shed right on off of it, and he'll be feeling much better. Now, sometimes there are retained eye caps, and they can be quite stubborn. Uh, one of the methods I've used in the past is use a little bit of mineral oil, and that mineral oil, uh, if you place it, it'll work its way underneath the eye, and then you can gently remove the eye cap with your fingers or with a, um, a, a soft sponge. Now, another thing I want to recommend, uh, another way you can do this is uh, take sphagnum moss, make sure you got a little heating element over one side of the cage, uh, and put some damp sphagnum moss in uh, if you don't have, um, or if you want to kind of do it in a different way and let the animal sit, not necessarily in water, but you can sit it in a humid area. And that sphagnum moss, because it has a high humidity and it's moist, is going to be another way that you can kind of help get the skin uh, dislodged from the new skin underneath, the new growth underneath. So there you have that, man. Very cool, good stuff, what's happening? I love this snake, very beautiful. Uh, he's just gonna work his way down my leg. I'm just hanging out. We got a lot going on. We got a cherry head there, and we've also got a really pretty, two pretty elongated tortoises. How do you like those, man? I do, hold on, I need to show you this a little bit better. Let me remove the uh, stanchions, there you go. All right, look at these guys, so beautiful. I love my little elongateds. 
and I love my cherry heads. And now I'm super excited to have these two beauties right here and a third one in the incubator plus another cherry head. What an exciting day in the incubator. Hey, where are you going? Are you looking to ship yourself? Where are you going, kid? Wait, get over here. Come back out here. And look at how long the snake is. Not even done grown. Come here, boo boo. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at this beautiful snake. So we had a fun day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you learned something here. Uh, there you go. All right, everybody. This is Kenan saying, hey, thanks so much for never putting a snake around your neck. Certainly not a uh, constrictor. So let's be smart. Get it over there, over the shoulder. Very good. Anyhow, uh, well, I'm not being so smart. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. And don't forget, we're going to have some more videos showing you more about our scaly friends. Look at how active these two maniacs are. Very, very cool. And you can see all that good uh, vermiculite coming right off. And oh, look, the snake is actually climbing on the GoPro. How's that? It's a cool GoPro uh, view of a serpent. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> there he goes. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. I got to get my snake under control. See you.